What's going on everybody, Jolt here from the Token Minorities, and I am bringing you the Season 4 Week 11 Battle of the MPL, this week against the St. Louis Wretched Rams, coached by my friend Matty Brolic. Now, uh, if you happen to tune into last week's video, you would realize that the Toronto Raptors have already clinched the overall number one seed in the entire league, and therefore in our conference, so we already have a first round bye in the playoffs, which will be starting up here following this week, but uh, Matty also has clinched a playoff spot, and um, he did so by winning his division. So, uh, odds are high that I might have to face Matty in the uh, conference championship, so that would be the semifinals of the playoffs. And with that in mind, I do not want to bring a team for him this week that I could feasibly bring against him in the playoffs. So, with that in mind, this week is going to be a little bit uh, different <laughs> in terms of preparation. And by that, I mean I'm going to be able to bring some pretty fun sets, along, uh, which I'll describe here in a little bit. But uh, just go ahead and looking at his team briefly, he has Infernape, Tyranitar, Azelf, Amoongus, Salamence, Bronzong, Stoutland, Lantern, Fortress, Crawdon, and Mega Gyarados. So he has what many people have considered to be a pretty, uh, I guess mediocre draft is the best way to put it. It's not a bad draft by any means, but it doesn't really have a bunch of standout threats like a lot of the other drafts do across the league. But he does have things like Infernape, uh, Tyranitar, Salamence, uh, Mega Gyarados, Crawdon, all of which are very powerful hitters. He has Stoutland, which can of course hit very hard in the sand, or of course uh, boosted by Sand Rush. Um, it makes it a very big threat. Then he just has a bunch of other kind of niche walls. He's used the Zelf very well this season as well. So he has some pretty good threats. I don't really want to go into uh, too much detail as far as uh, my threats against his team, just because I want to maintain as much secrecy as possible as to my... Uh, my initial thoughts about my team when looking at his. Um, so with that in mind, I'm just going to describe the uh, Funzy team that I decided to come up with and bring this week because this game has zero relevance in terms of the playoffs. This is just going to be a, uh, I guess, a free-for-all <laughs> for all intents and purposes. So let's go ahead and hop on over to the team builder and I'll show you what fun stuff I decided to bring. Okay, so uh, my initial hope was that I could build a Hexaband offense team, and that would mean six Pokemon, each holding the item Choice Band. Uh, unfortunately, my team didn't quite have the resources to uh, even make that half a game if I were to bring it, so I was forced to only bring three Pokemon holding the Choice Band, and then bring uh, three other threats per se. So let's go ahead and dive on into it. So I started off with the Talonflame on a Choice Band, and Lucario on a Choice Band, and Jirachi on a Choice Band, as these three mods really I thought had uh, the best match matchup when holding a choice band on my team against his and uh yeah so just in general Talonflame's Brave Bird coverage is very good he does have Tyranitar to switch in against it but uh, otherwise nothing really wants to take a hit from this and I can always U-turn on the incoming Tyranitar so that's about uh, all this I have to say about this thing I have a little bit of bulk on it just in case uh, I need to have that bulk for a rogue hidden power rock or something uh, I know in this match he's probably likely to make plays that uh, are somewhat risky in that he can afford to do so because this game doesn't matter. So uh, I needed a little bit of bulk just in case he has something to hit me pretty hard. So that's the idea with Talonflame. Next up is Lucario, of course, on a choice band with appropriate coverage moves. Uh, this hits really the majority of his team for pretty good damage, um, but and we'll see what happens. And then next up is the Jirachi on the choice band. This is more the trick uh, utility user. I definitely am not fond of the choice band on this Pokemon, but uh, we're bringing it because we're real. <laughs> as real as we can possibly be this week, I guess. But anyway, that's the triple band core. Next up is Tentacruel, and uh, this set is a Swords Dance Life Orb set. I've been wanting to bring this pretty much all season, and I doubt I'm going to bring it in the playoffs, so this is going to be my last opportunity to do so, and we're just going to see what happens on that. But it is a pretty fast Pokemon overall, so it does run the Swords Dance set decently well, and Maddie's team is relatively slow overall as well, so uh, this could potentially put in a good amount of work if I can get some of his walls a little bit weakened. So overall, we'll mention that this team is going to be very heavy on the physically offensive side. I, I thought that I would have the best chance of pulling off a win with a team like this if I did uh, overpressure his physically uh, defensive Pokemon, and just due to the fact that his uh, physically defensive Pokemon really don't have the best recovery, at least in general. I believe, I believe Amoongus is the only exception to that. I think this actually can be pretty effective. So, Triple Band Core coupled with a Swords Dance Tentacruel is how I started things off, and then we get to the really fun part. Now, this is something, this is a strategy that I have I thought of early in the season, and there was no way I, I was going to be able to bring it 
during the season at a time when the battle definitely was going to impact my playoff chances. So uh, this was quite honestly my last opportunity to do it as I franchised my Clefable before this season and given the rules of the MPL I'm not allowed to franchise the same Pokemon more than once in a row. So at the end of this season I'm not going to be able to keep Clefable on my team unless I manage to draft it in the first round next season. So. Odds are high that this is my last opportunity to ever run Belly Trump Cliff Fable, and uh, this is the week that I'm going to run Belly Trump Cliff Fable. But in order to initiate that, I have to bring a Memento Megalodios with dual screens and Tailwind. The Tailwind is mainly there to support the other four mons on my team, but uh, if for some reason I'm able to get a both screens Tailwind and, and a Memento with my Lottie, then I will definitely take, take the time to do so. But uh, regardless, the most important thing here is to me Memento whatever Pokemon is in Lottie's face, and that will allow my Belly Drum Clefable with the Salic Berry substitute and pretty much perfect coverage for his entire team and Drain Punch Ice Punch to hopefully go ham against his team. So the game plan going in is to basically wear down his team as much as I can with my Triple Band Core and Tentacruel and then just clean up as much as I can with Clefable. I'll be honest, I'm not really expecting to win this game, but uh, if I can get Belly Drum Clefable a few kills, I'll consider it a small win in my book. So uh, that's about all I have to say. Um, dual Screens also is pretty nice just to support the Triple Band Core in case I'm not able to Oko something with one of these Pokemon, as that'll make it more likely for me to be able to live a Rogue hit or so. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the team. It's a strange team, that's for sure. It's not something that I've ever tried to use before. I didn't do any test battles before this uh, before this match either. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hop on over to the battle and see if I can do something with this. All right, and here we are with the match. I'm looking at team preview. He brought a lot of things that are going to make the sweep with uh, Belly Drum Clefable a little bit difficult, particularly that Crawdon as just its presence of Priority Aqua Jet kind of harms my strategy a lot uh, in that after the belly drum and after the substitute I'm going to be left at 25% which is just easily in aqua jet KO range and just due to that fact it does make it uh, a little bit pointless to have so much uh, speed investment on my Clefable um, especially considering he didn't bring Infernape and that was exactly the Pokemon that was trying to outspeed with this Clefable with the insane amount of speed investment I had on it uh, in hindsight I guess it would have been better if I were running Salic Berry to have more bulk just so that I can make sure I outspeed things like Crawdon um, or to make sure that I'm not going to be killed by an Aqua Jet from Crawdon, but uh, unfortunately I didn't do that here, and now I'm still going to be going for the sweep of Clefable, or at least as many kills as possible with Clefable, regardless of what it does to the end result of this game in terms of a win or loss, but uh, Crawdon definitely is going to make that a little bit difficult. As for my other threats, the Cario is looking like an enormous threat to his team. Uh, the only thing he really has that can switch in uh, and take more than two hits from it is probably that Amoongus if it has any HP investment at all. As if it has, I believe, max HP, uh, it has a 0% chance to be 2 it KO'd by a bandit of Lucario's close combat. So I'll need to weaken the Amoongus in order for Lucario to put in a lot of work. But the goal here, looking at team preview, is to weaken the Bronzong and weaken the Fortress to the point where Clefable can handle both of them and hope that there's some way I can get rid of the Crawdon uh, before I try to bring in the Clefable. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens there. Also, Jirachi's looking a little bit... Uh, a little bit weak this game. I believe I'd like to get off a trick against something um, so that I don't have to be stuck using my choice band. As the choice band on this really is looking pretty useless here. But uh, if I can maybe donate that choice band to Bronzong or Fortress, that would be pretty good. Or even to Amoongus if he wants to switch that in against it. Something like that would be really nice. But uh, let's go ahead and hop on into the match and we'll see what happened. So he led off with his Fortress and I led off with my Jirachi because I'd really like to uh, get rid of this Choice Band as soon as possible. Just donate it to whoever wants it. I don't think he's going to go straight into his Tyranitar. And he goes into his Moongus, but he turns out to be a Choice Specs Amoongus. So that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, that does not really benefit me at all to lose my Choice Band and obtain Choice Specs. That's actually much worse. So I just go straight into my uh, Tentacruel to take any hit. I don't really expect him to have Spore but unfortunately he does have Spore, and now my Moongus is, or my uh, Tentacruel rather, is going to be asleep for a while, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, here I just pull the double into my Lucario, as it seems very safe, especially when he's un unable to go for Spore again, and I'm just going to dish off a free close combat, and it does 47% to the Moongus, confirming that it's probably about a max HP Moongus, and he makes a really nice play, predicting me to uh, switch into my Talonflame to take a Hidden Power Fire, and he actually has Hidden Power Rocks, so uh, that blew me back. Luckily, I did manage to survive with 1%, 
but now I'm just going to make the nice easy double back into my Lucario and just give him another close combat as he has no switch in. Something's going to essentially have to die here and he decides to sack his uh, Amoongus. Now here I see the opportunity to go ahead and weaken the Bronzong with close combat. I don't think he's going to have Earthquake, but he has Explosion. And the funny thing about this team, I'm going to go ahead and pause, Maddie also decided to bring three Choice Band users, which I find absolutely hilarious. He has Choice Banded Bronzong, Choice Banded Azelf, and Choice Banded Fortress. Now the funny thing about those Pokemon is that each of them only have two moves, Sleep Talk and Explosion. So uh, I'm going to have to readjust, well if I had known his attacks in the battle I would have had to considerably readjust my strategy as that just kind of shuts everything down as nothing I can really do can survive banded explosions or nothing I have can survive banded explosions from either Azelf or Fortress or Bronzong so uh, that's that's just a little bit unfortunate to say the least I do lose my Lucario there to the explosion however I probably should have switched into my Jirachi there as I really was playing with that uh, that idea and that would have allowed me to uh, keep my Lucario around to do a bunch of work to the rest of his team, especially considering he has no switches left. I, I really should have kept my Lucario, but whatever. Anyways, I just go for the Break Burp on Talonflame, as I really didn't see any reason to try to predict the Tyranids are coming in, and the damage on it's going to be nice anyways. Now here I'm going to pause. Um, I was kind of in a tough situation, especially, like, as soon as I lost my Lucario, I was in a really tough situation, but that was just kind of a poor play on my part, to be honest. But regardless, all I really have left in terms of win conditions, especially with my Sleeping Tentacruel, is this Clefable. So, uh, I have to find an opportunity to go for that Clefable sweep at some point, and the only thing that really stands remaining on his team that I can set up against is this Tyranitar. So, this was really my only opportunity or I, th I thought it was going to be my only true opportunity to uh, go for the Clefable Sweep. And in doing so, I had the opportunity to either go for a Memento or a Reflect on this turn. Now, the issue here is that I don't know this Tarbanatar's item. And judging based upon the damage from that Brave Bird, it appears to have very little HP investment. So that tells me that odds are not all that low that he could be a Choice Scarf Tarbanatar. And as a Choice Scarf Tarbanatar, um, he would be able to do upwards of 90% to my Megalodios with an Adamant Crunch. Um, and in that case, at the, in the moment of the game, I was a little distracted, I won't be, I won't lie on that, I was a little distracted throughout the game with uh, the things going on around me, but uh, in the moment I thought my best play was to just go straight for the Memento, as Memento would guarantee that my Clefable would be able to go for the Belly Drum against the Tyranitar. However, the issue here is that I should have gone for the Reflect, as I have Reflect, and if I'm guaranteed to survive the, the uh, crunch from the Tyranitar, Reflect's going to stick around just as long, or longer, much longer, than the Memento will, because he's obviously going to switch out his Tyranitar against the Clefable. So if I had gone for the Reflect here, it would have been around for, you know, five turns, and that would be hopefully enough time for Clef to get off the Belly Drum against the Tyranitar, and then, uh, proceed to do a lot of work against his team. That would have been the smart play for me to do. However, I make a rather unfortunate uh, misplay, I guess, in going for the Memento here instead, which, I mean, it, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference in hindsight, because he does have two Explosion users, which I believe easily would have been able to take out my uh, Clefable, at, at least after two Explosions, I would have been able to lose my Clefable to these Pokemon. But uh, regardless, I do decide to just go for the Memento on this turn, and just go for the Clefable sweep, quote unquote. I, I definitely don't see any sweeping potential uh, based upon what he has left on his team, but I thought I'd try to go for at least one or two kills here and see what I can do. And he just goes straight to his fortress, which kind of sucks because uh, I don't have my boost yet and I don't have fire punch, so all I really have for this is drain punch. And after the belly drum, I thought I'd be able to go for something like a drain punch <clears throat> on this turn and get a bunch of health back from the fortress, but he just goes for the explosion. And uh, that's that's kind of unfortunate because he's he faints after explosion and breaks my substitute, so now I'm just left vulnerable to the stupid Crawdon. <laughs> and uh, down goes pretty much the rest of my team to the combination of Aqua Jets and Knockoff. So uh, that's the game. Unfortunately, we pick up a loss this week, but in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't make any difference as we already clinched our uh, playoff spot last week by defeating Cheese Boys. So we're still number one overall in the entire league in terms of record and differentials. So uh, that's pretty cool. Good game to Maddie, though. That was uh, you win this war of the realist this time around but uh, we'll see what happens in the playoffs if we do encounter each other there so uh, as for the playoffs we do have a first round by courtesy of having the uh, number one overall seed in our conference so 
Next week we're off. We don't have a game and I won't have an upload on Sunday for you guys. But uh, that week we will see Cheese Boy and the Phoenix Sun Current against Maddie and the St. Louis Reshu Rams. And uh, the winner of that game will face me in two weeks in the conference championship. So I'm definitely excited for that. As for the matchups here, I did think I got some pretty nice information from this game. Just from being able to play Maddie, playing against his team, just to see how he likes to use it. Um, and also just from doing some mock battles with Maddie in previous weeks. I have a pretty good idea of how to play against him, and I think I have a pretty solid strategy to use against his team as well. And uh, I'm excited to test that out Test that out if I do get the opportunity to play him in the conference championship. But if Cheese happens to beat Maddie in the semifinals of the, you know, the conference semifinals, uh, then I will gladly face Cheese again. And I do have a pretty good record against Cheese so far this season, 2-0 against him. Um, and if it needs to be 3-0, then I guess so be it. But hopefully we'll be able to pick up our first ever playoff victory for the Toronto Star Raptors franchise this season. So uh, we're looking pretty good to do so with the matchups and such um so that's about all i have to say thanks for sticking around uh everyone this season who watched all 11 of our regular season uploads this does conclude the regular season if that wasn't already obvious um so yeah next week starts the playoffs and we will see what happens there but thanks for watching guys i will see you later peace